Shoppers come into our stores with their grocery lists and leave our stores with grocery bags. Paper bags are convenient, practical, economical, and user-friendly. They are also sustainable, which means they have a low impact on environmental resources over the long term. What makes paper bags sustainable? Paper bags are renewable, reusable, compostable, and recyclable. Paper used to manufacture bags comes from certified and sustainably grown forests, as well as from recycled fiber. Paper bags are sturdy enough to be used more than once, either for carrying items again or for many other household uses. Paper bags will naturally decompose and can be used in composting as opposed to other bag materials. And paper bags can be recycled to make new paper bags or other paper products, minimizing waste and landfill use. In addition to being sustainable, paper bags play an important role in customer service. Bagging is a key service we offer our customers. Customers expect us to be professionals and to know how to properly bag each order so they can get their items home easily and undamaged. Today's customers are also extremely interested in sustainable bagging solutions. Bagging gives us an opportunity to have a personal interaction with the customer and to show them how important their business is to us. Bagging is usually the last chance we have with the customer to make a good impression. When a customer checks off their grocery list, it's time to check off our list of proper bagging basics. When bagging, the first step in delivering good customer service is to choose the right size bag for each order. Picking the right bag will adequately contain the customer's items and will also help contain supply costs, making the store more efficient. Quickly estimate each customer's carrying ability and their purchases before making your bag selection and bagging strategy. When learning proper bagging techniques, there are three critical phases to remember. Setup, filling the bag, and knowing what not to bag. In the setup phase, the bagger should quickly gauge the customer's bagging needs according to the number of items and their weight. Choose the right size bag and estimate the number of bags that will be needed for the order. If possible, pre-stage the items by sorting them as they come down the belt. Open the first of the bags completely and set it so that it stands upright. Keep like items together, such as cans. To fill the bag, first place cans and other heavy items in the bottom of the bag for stability and so they don't crush any lighter contents. Next, build walls around the perimeter with sturdy items like cereal boxes and cartons, creating a square bottom space. Put glass items in the bag to help protect them from breakage. Always place crushable items at the top of the bag. A good rule of thumb is to try to fit about 15 items in each bag. Knowing what not to put in grocery bags is also very important. Don't bag large items with handles, such as milk jugs, detergent containers, or large soda packs. Place them directly in the cart instead. Always bag soap and chemicals separately from food items, too. You may also want to place meat and frozen items in separate bags to keep them apart from other food items. If you're using paper bags with handles, leave the handles down until the bag is fully packed. Then pull the handles up, not out. When lifting, always use both handles. Double bagging is virtually never needed, and here's why. Today's bags are engineered to easily hold 25 pounds. To illustrate the bag's capacity for demonstration purposes only, watch this strength test. We're adding 25 pounds of weight to this single bag. While you don't want bags to be this heavy for the average customer to carry, you can see that it's no problem for a single bag to handle this much weight when it's properly packed. From sustainability, to supply and cost efficiency, to customer service excellence. Checking off the proper bagging techniques can make a positive difference for everyone. Keep good bagging practices high on your list.